Hello, this is Steve Hartley, G0FUW, and I'm here with Dan, M0TGN, and Lewis, G4YTN. And uh, we're going to do a short demonstration on capacitors, inductors, and tuned circuits. And what we're going to do is some homemade capacitors and coils, and we're going to analyse them or measure them on this antenna analyzer. We're not going to use any antennas, but it's also useful for checking capacitance and inductance, and indeed resonance. So, we've got it switched on. Let's put it into capacitance mode. And um, here's the first capacitor. It's made from a piece of double-sided printed circuit board with two leads, one on either side. So we've got the two metal plates, the insulated dielectric in the centre. And if we clip it onto the analyzer, we should get the reading of its value in picofarads. What's that reading, Dan? That's uh, 59 picofarads. 59 picofarads, okay. We've got another capacitor here, which is made from the same material, uh, but as you can probably see, is a larger surface area. So if that's bigger, you'd expect the capacitance to be bigger. So if we replace the 59 picofarad capacitor with this larger one, if the theory holds, we should have a higher value. And that's reading 82. 82, pounds. good. So the larger capacitor gives us a larger value. Now another thing that we, uh, we should know about capacitors is if we connect them in parallel, we, uh, the value should add up. So um, if anybody's good at maths, 59 and 82 should give us something around... 130 something, there we go. 137, 138 picofarads. There we go, so that's adding together quite nicely. And of course the other configuration which we can put them in is to put them in series. So if we connect those in series, the values should be dramatically reduced. So much so that we can't actually see it, we'll need to change the frequency on the analyzer. There we go. It's 40 picofarads. 40 picofarads. And Quite reassuringly, that's smaller than the smaller of the two that we used, which if you remember was 59 picofarads. Um, so you'd expect the value of the two combined to be smaller than the smaller. Uh, and there it is. So again, the theory stands up to, uh, to practice. And we'll just pause there and we'll get some inductors for you. Okay, we've measured capacitance, now we can switch over to measure some inductors. So if we go on to inductance mode on the uh, analyzer, now we're going to start out with this small coil, it's made with um, enameled copper wire and um, quite a small diameter. And we'll just clip him onto the terminals and see what sort of value this one comes up at. And there we go, what's that reading down? It's uh, 0.396. Okay, so less than half a micro Henry, uh, but it is a very small coil, the sort of thing you might see in a VHF um, kit. Um, so if we take that one off, now we've got a coil here that's got the same number of turns, and it's about the same length, but clearly it's a much bigger diameter. And there are no formula in uh, syllabus for coils and um, windings, but uh, you are expected to know that more turns gives more inductance and a larger diameter gives more inductance. So we've got the same number of turns, um, but we've got a much bigger diameter. So we've gone from less than half a micro Henry to 5.75. 5.75, which is more of a sort of a HF kind of value that you might find in a, a, an antenna trap or something like that. And change to another one. And it's made the same diameter, but as you can see, there's many more turns, probably about twice as many turns on this one. So more turns, but the same diameter, we'd expect this to be larger again. And that's 20, uh, 27, 28, wait for it to settle down. 27 uh, micro Henry's there. Okay, so yeah, it's varying around a little bit, but uh, it's around about that sort of value. Um, Perhaps if we, if we change the the, uh, the frequency a little bit, well that that steadies it down a little bit. There there about Twenty-seven microhenries. Um, so again, the theory adds up. The longer the coil, the more turns, um, the 
bigger the diameter it gives more inductance. Um, we'll try the series connection again as we did with the capacitors. Um, if we connect the two coils together, what we're effectively doing is putting even more turns on the coil um, when we put them in series. So we had uh, 26 and 5, you add them together it sort of comes up to just under 35, so 34.95. So it's we're adding together. We're, we're getting more uh, inductance with the uh, with the more with with the connected in series. It's unusual for inductors to be used in parallel, um, but if we do connect them in parallel, what we should find is that the two um, act a bit like resistors in parallel, and we end up with something that's smaller than the smaller of the two. Just refusing to clip on there. Okay, and that's 4.56 microhenries. Again, so we, 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 we've shown that the theory works. I say it's very unusual to have inductors in parallel in real life, but if you do connect them in parallel, you end up with a smaller value than the smaller of the two. Um, what we're going to do next is connect one of these coils up as a tuned circuit, but uh, let's just take a pause at the moment. Right, what we've got here now is we've connected up the coil and the capacitor which we measured earlier as a series tuned circuit onto the analyzer. And what we're going to do is work out what the frequency should be at the resonant um, frequency for the tuned circuit and then we'll check it on the meter. Now Dan's got the calculator and the values that we're going to work with as we measured before, um, in round terms it was 80 picofarads on the capacitor and 26 microhenries for the coil. Okay Dan, what does that work out at? Okay, I've worked it out to be uh, 3.489 uh, megahertz. Let's see what the meter tells us. We need to put it into advanced mode. Try that again, advanced. And then resonance mode. And when the uh, analyzer is at the right frequency, we should see a, a dip on the uh, impedance needle. So it's currently running at 2.8, that's 3, it's starting to dip down, 3.4, oh, and come past back to there. That's reading 3.477. What did you have done? 3.489. Well, that's not bad, is it? That just shows that the, uh, again, the theory stands up to practical demonstration. And uh, hopefully that's uh, confirmed what we uh, what we were thinking earlier. I don't think we've got anything else to show you there on tuned circuits, capacitors, and coils. But hopefully that's brought a little bit of life to what you saw in the textbook. So seven threes from G0FUW, M0TGN, and G4YTN.